you know what they say. Mo money, mo problems. That's a terrible intro. Okay, we are back. So today we will be making the Mogwin Palace. Well, a section of it to be precise. We're gonna map out how big it's gonna be and where things are gonna sit together. For this, A4 paper simply won't do. This has gotta be A3. And if I could just find the end of the tape, there it is. Now, to decide what I'm gonna build, I hopped into the game and had a little walk around the palace just to sort of see what I can make. And obviously I gotta build the end section where Moog and Mikola are, right? From the stairs onwards, I think works the best. And all these pillars and pots and tombstones, there's a lot to put together here. So let's start mapping it out. So I think the pillars are gonna go on the sides here and the stairs will be built at the front leading up to Mikola and to Moog. And this lid is about the same size as Moog and his wingspan, so I'll be drawing around it here where I think Moog will go. Then Mikola's cocoon will sit behind him and the back walls and pillars will sit behind that. Cool, I think we're ready to start building. So I got a bunch of big foam blocks split into separate parts, matching the paper design and using some cute little pins, I can temporarily hold them together so I can see how everything looks together. Then I just got a stack of thin little slabs which will be cut into our stairs. Now, before I get into the nitty gritty of the building, I did want to try and rig up some LED light circuits to this. So thinking ahead, before I start putting everything together, I want to drill a couple of holes into the floor where I think the lights would look coolest. Two, three, four, five. Cool. Now I do need to actually get the stuff to make an LED circuit. Mmm, a special delivery just for me. Let's take a look what's inside. Lots of soldering goodies. We've got a soldering iron and some instructions. Who needs instructions? I'm just going to ingest all this kit into my brain sphere and learn how to solder through telekinesis. I actually have no idea how to solder, so I should probably actually just go and research how to do it. What the hell is a solder of Godric? Well, that was weird. Alrighty, let's get this wire cut up and put into place so we can have it set up to rig later down the line. Doing it now means I'll know where everything is so I don't accidentally make it impossible for myself to do later on. I need to cut out a little cove where the battery pack can sit neatly at the back of the diorama with easy access to switch the lights on and off. Now for the lights, I got these little red capped LEDs and to test that it works, I'll just hook it up to this little three volt battery and we have light. Now just to strip the wires to expose the metal inside. And we can just solder the red wire to the positive side of the LED and the black wire to the negative side of the LED. And with a bit of heat shrink tubing over the top, we have a happy little LED light ready to light up the lands between. Now I did take the wire placeholders out as they were just getting in the way, but you know, I know where everything's gonna go now, so we should be good just to crack on. So I'm just gonna get all the big blocks glued together to get a good solid base shape. I'll cut these thin slabs into progressively shorter and shorter squares in order to make lovely little stairs within one cohesive block. These are actually a fair bit bigger than I had first intended, but you know, I'm gonna be taking some artistic liberties on the scaling of the overall thing. Otherwise, you know, it's gonna be a massive diorama with very small characters. Or at least that's just what I say to myself at night to sleep okay. Anyway, now that we've replicated that once, twice, three times, three times staircase. staircase. 
Now just to get those steppity steps glued into position. And we're on to making the walls around Mikola's cocoon. So it's kind of like a little squared brick wall sitting around the throne thing that the cocoon is sitting on. So we'll take some little foam leftovers and smash them into the pieces needed to assemble the walls. We'll start off by scoring in some stone shapes into the walls. I'm going a bit more haphazard odd shapes for the stones as most of this build will just be squared off bricks so a bit of variation doesn't hurt. And then just deepen those marks with a toothpick and smack some texture into it with some balled up foil. I'll do the same thing for the little pillars that sort of sit in between the walls and on the corners. And I just need to make this one, two, three, four, five, six times in total. Fortunately, I can just use more telekinesis to make five more of the little bastards. Now let's take our little bits and start sticking them together. Beautiful. Let's just get some little lower skirting boards stuck on to cover up their indignities. And there are a lot of floor tiles in this palace, but fortunately, if I smack a foam block hard enough, you'll get the exact amount of foam tiles you need. The magic of crafts. Now, to turn them from sharp squares into roughed up tiles, we'll stick them into a jar of rocks and just shake it all about. Lovely. Now for the extremely long, boring and laborious process of getting them all stuck into place. Luckily though, I've condensed an insanely long time into the space of 12 seconds. Gotta do the same for the stairs, but with slightly larger tiles. Yeah, that's cool, that's a fully tiled out base. Let's get Mikola's little walls stuck in place now. Now I have these little pillars that I have made later on in the video that I'm using now and yep, that's right, don't believe everything you see on the internet, nothing's in order, editing is a lie and nothing is real. But I'll get these little pillars with a couple small walls stuck on to create those little sort of like archway walkthrough parts. Now it's just time to mark out on the side bits where all the small wall bits will go. And then using the same techniques as earlier, we'll carve up the little foam walls, foil the bejesus out of them, and then cut some little weathering scars into them. Now, just to make five more of them, so we have six little walls. And let's glue them up. Looking good so far. Let's lay down a couple thin strips to add a bit more of like interest to the floor. I don't know what else you want to say. I don't know what else you want to call that. They're like little palace curbs. Then we can make a couple glue foam s'mores which can sit atop the little walls that are on the side. Now for the two pillar blocks at the back. These are the shapes I've cut out for it. And again, using the previous wall maneuvers, I'll start shaping out the designs. And now we have one, but we need two. Now for the pillars. I got these happy little chopsticks here. Very helpful when you want to ingest some balls of foil. Ooh, mm, foilicious. So I'm just gonna shape out some blocks on this chopstick using the foil to both add some texture, but also to round off these sharp edges to make it go from a oblong into a more rounded pillar shape. Then just take a small cube and shape out a little pillar head to sit on top of it. We just need that four times. Then just get those glued up onto the back walls, pop a pin in it to keep it secure, and we have two lovely little back wall pillar things. Now I need to cut out some chunks of the wall because I have a few cool pillar bases which will sit within the wall. You'll see them later on. Editing is a lie, nothing is real. Then just do our little wall designs on these big slabs of foam and we will be fully walled out. Now, before we do a big boy prime on this, let's take a look at how it's all coming together. Looking pretty cool. Time to get this primed up. Oh shit, I forgot the dirt. One sec. Oh, okay, yeah. 
Yep, I did forget to add the little grout texture stuff on the flat exposed parts. It's kind of best to do it before I prime, so good thing I remembered, just so it can all be one cohesive piece before we paint it. Now we can have a quick look at it before we prime it. That's better. So let's carefully pop this to one side. And we'll take some Mod Podge and some black paint and smack it together to create nothing. Sometimes transitions don't work. So what we'll do is we'll pop it into a cup and magic it together. Or if magic fails, you can just pour it all into a cup and mix it together. Then just slot that goop all over this build, making sure to cover absolutely everything. Then I can just take some basic grey acrylic and just start slapping it all over the prime once it has dried. Once the black prime has been coated in a standard grey, I can go back over and start adding in different beigey, sandy, browny, off whitey, other greyier tones in just to start adding a bit of variation. Then get some sandy tones in on those thin strips and realise that you're kind of turning it into a New York yellow curb. Then just carry on adding more and more and more and more and more tones to each individual brick. And then once those tones are in, it's time to tie them together a bit with a big wide dry brush of lighter tones on the upper areas. And before moving on, we'll get these little back pillars glued into place. Nice. So we've taken it from this dull gray lump to this slightly less dull gray lump. Progress, I guess. Outside we go into the big bad outdoors with a little spray bottle of black wash in hand and just start farting this black wash all over the build, dabbing off any excess pooling with some kitchen roll and then just leave it to dry. Then we've taken it from this slightly less dull gray lump to a slightly darker less gray dull lump. More progress, I guess. Another pass of light gray dry brushing will just give us a bit more highlighting over the darker tones. Now I was going to craft some pillars out of clay, but I have a 3D printer, so I used a 3D printer and printed a lovely little pillar. From the lovely design from the lovely folks at Realstone, go sub to their Patreon for amazing 3D printing goodies, the link is in the description. Now for some Wraith Bone Primer, I'll turn it from a grey pillar to a bony pillar. Then just with a mix of brown paint, some thinner and some water, I'll start taking the bone colour down to a darker shade and since it's a thin wash, it will settle down nicely into all the little cracks and crevices. And with a clean and dry flathead dry brush, I'll start adding some bone tone back in, just dry brushing over the raised edges and slowly progressing up through lighter tones. And we just need that 10 times. Perfect. Like I mentioned earlier, I had some bases to stick in the walls. Remember, editing is a lie, nothing is real. Well, here they are, primed black, and I'll just start basing it gray, adding some dabs of green and brown and sandy tones just to build up some of those sort of more natural, rocky kind of colors. Then black wash it all together, wait for it to dry, and then just dry brush some highlights on. and we have a lovely little pillar base. And we need that four times. Now for the mind-numbingly long process of replicating that across all these little pots and gravestones that I have. So there's only one way to get through painting all of these without losing my mind <coughs> and audience retention. And that is montage. We'll mix between different metallic, iron, brass, silver tones, also clay and terracotta colours on all the pots of all different shapes and sizes. Then onto the graves. Different grey tones slapped on each of them, followed up by sticking on some Agrax Earthshade and dry brush on the highlights once done. to the pots. We'll add in some Nuln Oil to each one of them to give them some contrast and gloss. And then once dried, back to highlighting with different brighter tones of terracotta and metallics. And here are all the little terrain pieces that I've just made. 
after hours of painting. <sighs> now time to start piecing bits together. We're gonna get those base bits stuck within the nooks of the wall. And then time to get these pillars shoved into place. And there we go, an absolutely mammoth task reduced to one single montage. Remember, editing is a lie, nothing, nothing is real. real. So I thought I was done with the build and then I remembered I gotta make all of those roof bits. No, God, oh. please, no, 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 no! So with another big foam block, we'll chop off the sides and then smack that into four separate pieces. And then with an identical block, we'll smash that into 10 little cubes. So before we progress, I'm just gonna line up all the pieces we need to make all the little roof parts. From all of this, we just need to grab one little cube. This little cube will be our pillar topper to go on top of the pillar. So I'm just gonna cut this top shape to try and match the style of like those Greek pillar heads that you see. Just make it look like a little plug, I guess, and then just carve off the sharp edges to bevel it. Then I can just glue on some little angular foam dealies to sit underneath that lip. And we just need that 10 times. Now for the main slabs that will sit on top of the pillar heads, I'm just gonna cut some shape into these foam blocks that I have. Just gonna try and match it to the shape that I can see in the actual game design. Then just do what we always do for the millionth time, score some brick design into it, shape it with a toothpick, cut some weathering into it, and then batter it with some foil. We have one, but we need four. So those are the base bits done. Now we need the top slabs that will sit on top of those. So do the same in similar fashion to the previous ones, but carve out some larger stone slabs that will sit on top. And we've got one, but again, we need that four times. As I was cutting these though, I felt like I needed to provide an offering to the Lord of Blood by way of my own. So I totally on purpose ah! cut my hand open doing this. You have a taste for noble blood. Remember guys, always cut away from yourself, never cut towards yourself. So now that I'm bandaged up and stopped the blood flow, we can get back to making the roof parts. And since it's all pretty much exactly the same as all the other parts, we're just gonna blitz through it all with a super duper time lapse. And there we have a lovely roof to sit at the back. Now let's line up all the pieces that we've made so far. Now let's mud podge prime them. Cool, let's get them all stuck together before we paint them. And then line them up. And then paint them gray. And then add the browns. And then blackwash them. And then dry brush highlight them. And there we have our last building bits. Now it's time for another montage while we put all of this together. So after realizing I totally forgot to put the pillar tops on, I had to take the slabs off and start again. New montage time. Palace build done. That was a hell of a job, but that is a job jobbed. Now time to hop into Blender. <laughs> Not that Blender, this Blender. 
Now, I'm no super duper blender up, but I really wanted to design the sort of throne thing that Mikola's cocoon is resting on. And now I was gonna model it out of clay, but I have a 3D printer, so I used a 3D printer. What I did was take some snapshots of it in game from the front, the sides and the back, stuck it into Blender and started mapping out a very generic shape of it ready to print. Could you kick up the uh, 43D, 3D, 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 engage. Well, that looks. Oh! I'm okay. Time to slice it. Job done, let's get it printed. Hi Nula, and off to print. Once printed, I'll let it drip dry for a bit and then get it taken off of the bill plate. Remove the supports, get it washed, get it cured, and we're ready to work with it. So I want some sharp rocky texture applied to it. So I've got some of this polyfiller used to fill holes in walls and I'm just gonna apply it liberally across all of it and just start pushing it and pulling it around. Just start building up this kind of rocky design. And then that will take about a day to fully dry. And then once it has, I can whack on some Wraithbone primer and get to painting it. We'll start off with a wash of Citadel Seraphim Sepia to take that bone tone way down and give it a much darker, dingier color. After that oil wash, it resembles something you might find in a bargain bucket. But we'll take this deep fried demigod stool and start applying some bone tone back in and work through dry brushing on progressively lighter and lighter tones to build up our highlights. And from there you get something that sort of looks like what your kid would make in a food tech class. Now for Mikola's arm that's reaching out of the cocoon, I actually had this leftover arm that I printed a bit too big from my Orphan of Kos diorama. The Orphan of Kos arm looks eerily similar to Mikola's arm, so not only is it good to use, it's good enough. So I'll bash on some black primer to this and start adding in some different gray tones to it. It's kind of got that zombified flesh look to it. Once I have that arm looking like the Walking Dead, I'll start dry brushing on some lighter gray flesh tones just to start building up some highlights and dynamism to it. With the skin done, I'll add some red contrast paint to give some of the blood stains before adding in some lovely coagulated blood to build up the drippy, gooey blood. And there's a little arm ready to be stuck in an egg. What a sentence. Now, I was gonna 3D print the egg, but I have clay, so I'm gonna use clay. Super sculpy clay, to be precise. Now, I'll just roll it around into nice, thin, stretchy flaps and start flapping those flaps all over this flappy foil ball just poking and prodding and pretending like I know how to use clay properly. Now it is sticky, stretchy stuff, so some nice nitrile gloves will help in it not sticking to me too much, and we'll also add some nice finer textures on it rather than some big dopey fingerprints. Then once we have the generic cocoon shape, I just need to carve out a big crack in the center where the arm will pop out from. And into the oven it goes to harden up. A little while later, we have a hard boiled egg. I gotta remove all of this foil from the inside, which I knew was gonna be a pain in the tits, but it's a necessary evil so that Mikola isn't a big tin foil monster. Now to base it, I'm just gonna use a mix of matte pat, matte, bleh. I'm just gonna use a mix of matte Mod Podge, white acrylic and umber acrylic to create a sort of thick, eggy kind of color. And the Mod Podge mixed into the paint will give a bit of strength to the egg as well. Then just coat that sucker up. And once base and dried, I'll use some Gilliman Flesh Contrast just to give some deeper contrast to the overall thing. Then once that has dried, I'll move on to dry brushing on lighter and lighter tones to really beef up those bright highlights.
Now, one thing I've not been sure of was how to effectively create the webbing that surrounds the cocoon. That was until I put my apron in the tumble dryer to set up this next part where I happened to stumble across tumble dry sheets and wow, would you look at that? If you pull them apart, they look like webbing. It's hard to believe I'm this much of a genius because I'm not. This technique was actually from John over on the Miniature Hobbyist channel who has all the big ideas. So if you want big brain ideas, go check him out. So with a coating of Mod Podge over the cocoon, I'm just gonna start pulling these sheets apart in order to create the cocoon webbing effect and just pasting it all over like some sort of horrid paper mache Pokemon. to just assemble all of Mikola's bits together. Sounded odd. And then onto the palace he goes. Now time for the main man himself. Mo. Time for an epic montage. Again, this is another beautiful design from Real Steel, so please do go check out their Patreon if you want to make your own Mo. Again, the link is in the description. Now time to get him printed. Hi, New. In the printer he goes. There he is, the Lord of Blood. Don't look so tough now, do you? Let's begin by piecing him together, leaving the wings separate for later. I'm just using some green stuff putty here to fill any obvious gaps in. Get some Wraithbone primer on. Now we can begin painting, starting off with some dark blue contrast over his robes, then onto a deep red contrast onto his little hanky bit. Now I'm basing the gold parts with some deep warm gold tones. And then getting his head and his hands based with some dark brown contrast paint. The contrast paint is very handy to base this model as it will settle into all of these tiny little details on him. Then some oil washes over the gold to give us a bit of deeper contrast. And we can start building up the blue tones on top of the contrast base to give us a smoother finish and start building up the actual color a bit. Making sure I'm adding lighter tones to the raised ripples on the cloth, keeping the deeper parts darker, using thin applications of paint and glazes, and we should start to get a nice, smooth contrast tone building up. Then I can dry brush on some progressively brighter and more vibrant gold tones over the gold parts, and then move on to adding some gold decals to the clothing as well. Then we can do the same thing to the red, adding some deeper tones into the darker areas, building up the lighter red tones to accentuate the highlight areas. Then it's onto the wings. I'm gonna base them with some more dark brown contrast. There's a lot of detail in the feather, so we'll need that contrast to settle in everywhere. Once the feathers are in, I'll use some dull fleshy tones to paint in the skin parts. Then stick some Agrax Earthshade over them to give them a bit more contrast. Now it's time for the arduous process of painting any individual details to the feathers. It's long, but it does make a difference. And there we go, one lovely little wing. We have one, but we need two. And there we go, two wings, two little wings. So let's get them shoved in his back. And there we have him, the little mini Lord of Blood. Now that Moog's done, we'll set him to one side and we can move on to laying out all of the tiny little terrain pieces we made earlier. 
I'll just start sticking them all over and it should start to bring the whole piece together and it won't feel so empty anymore. Very cool. Now it's time to finish what we started, the lights. Now in my infinite research, I found there were actually two main ways to set up a light circuit, parallel or series. I attempted a series circuit last night at like 1am at my desk to see how it works, but it meant draining all of the voltage from the bulbs, so you don't get as bright of a light. So for this, a parallel circuit was the way to go so that each LED is getting the same voltage going through it. Now it's not going to be like a proper parallel circuit, but it will kind of do the same thing. So I'm basically getting all of the positive wires from the LEDs sort of tied together so it's one single unit and then doing the same for the negative wires. That way they can all connect to the power source and each get the same voltage running towards it. Now for all of you LED savvy folk out there, you might be asking why I haven't put any resistors in the series and that's, that's because I'm a lazy boy who bought LEDs with inbuilt resistors. So. There you go. Now to test it. Perfection. So with all the wires in place and with the whole thing working, it's time to solder it all together just to make the wires one cohesive unit. Then slide the heat shrink tubing in place, blast it with a heat gun or a lighter or something that gives you heat and it will shrink to fit. Then it's time to just carve into the base with a hot foam cutter so that the wires can sit within the foam so it's nice and flush and flat. Oh, we're so nearly at the end now. It's taking an eternity. So one of the last things I need to do is make a big thick base out of some MDF. So I'm just gonna mark out the size of the build around it so I can cut into it. Outside we go again clamp it to the table and use your best manual non-electric chainsaw to get this sucker cut to shape. Then you can just sand it down so that the edges are nice and smooth. Give it a good blasting with some black primer and we have a solid base. Let's get it attached. Stupidly, I attempted to hot glue it without realizing I won't have enough time between applying the glue and, you know, getting the base actually attached before the hot glue dries and cools, so that was dumb. So I ripped that glue off, popped to the local hardware store and got some proper wood glue. Now that the proper stuff is on, we can get it stuck together. Let's have a quick check. Yep, that's cool. Now for the final piece of the puzzle. Let's make some blood dripping down from Mikola's hand. So just using some fishing wire, we'll use it as a string base for the blood drip. Pop on some UV resin and then cure it with a UV torch before it drips down, making a lovely gross little sticky drip. Now time for some blood. And without me realizing, the nozzle had dried from the last time I used it, which meant a bit of force was needed and then... Yep, right at the end. Well, I guess I'd better spread that massive blood spill about a bit and then just dab off any excess blood with some more kitchen roll. Now time for some super sauce. Nah, uhu. This uhu glue is the king of string in the crafting ring. It's super sticky tacky glue that comes out so stringy and dries so quickly that so many people use it to create saliva or blood or webbing effects. And I need to create that webbing effect that's coming off of the cocoon. So I'm just gonna go back and forth between the cocoon and surrounding areas just so I can start building up this stringy webbing. Now little Moog, time to go home. And with him in, we are done. And we're on to the glamour shots. Dearest Nicola. You must abide.
well there we go. This project took me weeks upon weeks to complete, so I truly appreciate all of you who have stuck around to the end. There was so much footage on this edit that I fully maxed out my editing timeline, which I didn't think was possible. A massive, massive thank you to my good friends Jay and Luke who helped me film that tasty little ending sequence. And as ever, a big shout out and thank you to my delightful patrons. Hydra Queen, Michael, Steon, Stephen Irving Steeby, Hannah Grine, Hannah Ferguson, JL, Lord of Iron, Not Amber's Boyfriend, Potatoes, Tony Zhang, Duke Spitzer, Levi Enzel, and Rapid Berserker. Check out some awesome Souls work submitted by some of my patrons here on the screen. And if you want any artwork of yours showcased on any upcoming videos, or you want to support the channel, please be sure to check out my Patreon page for all kinds of good times and behind the scenes nonsense. And if you enjoyed today's episode, please be sure to slap that like button, drop me a comment, and be sure to hit that subscribe button if you haven't already. I truly appreciate all of your support. See you next time.